Building a Shower Bench with Isaac Ostrom. Okay, so we're building this cool wheelchair access shower. So you can see we, we already jackhammered out the slab right here so that we're going to be able to get the right slope going down to the line drain. But first of all, I want to build a bench right here. And we're actually going to build like a, it's going to be like a 45. Like originally, I was going to build a, like a box right here because the glass is going to be right here. Uh, but instead, what I want to do is make like a 45 degree right here. So I'm going to have to fill this in, but I'm going to make this out of curdy board. So it's going to come here with a 45 on it. That way the access of the shower is right through here. There's going to be a panel and actually the door, the door is going to be hinged like right here and the door is going to be able to open like this. So I wanted to create a nice little access here. And if we were to make this a square, then the access would be way too narrow. So we're going to make it out of 45. So today I want to show you how to make a bench out of two inch curdy board. So one of the ways you could do it would be to wood frame it, which you would have to shoot, you know, two by fours pressure treated into the slab, which is kind of difficult to do, or, and then, you know, then build it and then curdy it. But two inch curdy boards are a great way to do it. They do sell preformed curdy benches, but not custom ones. So two inch curdy board is a great product. I like to use it for building benches and curbs and anything structural. So yeah, we'll go ahead and get it cut. Okay, so I have my two inch curdy board right here. It usually comes in two foot by eight foot um, sections. And it's a, again, it's a great product. You can see, I like, I like to make a lot of curbs out of it. And I like to, best way to cut it is on a, a table saw. And this is my cordless uh, DeWalt. It's a 60 volt. Um, I actually really like this. And, um, you know, I don't take my tools for granted. You know, I, a lot of times I just show these tools I'm using. But, you know, there was a time when I couldn't have dreamed of being able to afford a tool like this. This is about a $400 tool. And, um, you know, when I buy stuff, I still get excited. I'm still really grateful that I have tools like this because it's just awesome. And there was a time when I'd walk through Home Depot and I'd look at all this stuff and I'd just be like, man, oh, someday I hope I can afford that. And today I can, but, uh, you know, I don't take that for granted. I don't forget where I came from. These are awesome tools. So check it out. This, this is the best way to cut it. I'm going to make this first diagonal cut. Um, it does have a rip fence, and there is a diagonal tool that you can cut, but I just do these by hand. See, that's a nice, clean, flat, 90 degree cut. And so for uh, my straight cuts, I like to use the rip fence. And what's cool about the table saw, we're gonna come over here, so I can, I can actually set this when I, when I need a measurement, I can actually set this rip fence to whatever I want it to be. Never get too comfortable. Yeah, this, if there's any tool that we use that will take a finger off, really hurt you, this is it. Be very careful when using this stuff. Uh, you should wear eye protection. When I'm cutting wood, I wear eye protection. Hearing protection is a good thing to do too. Um, but yeah, this is a very dangerous tool. Um, you don't want to be uh, messing with it. It has a guard that I usually use, but doing 45s and stuff, you can't really do it. So. Okay, next thing I'm going to do, I'm, gonna, I'm making the face now. I got the top, making the face. I'm going to make a 22 and a half degree angle. So, yeah, here we go. that. 
Now I need to make the other side. Okay, so I, I cut my one at 22 and a half to get my 45. And then I just took the scrap and I'm going to use that for the other side. So I have a 45 degree angle. And then I'm just going to double check. Like that. Take my mark. So I got my, my curdy board pre-cut. I'm going to go ahead and start sticking it. I'm just getting the uh, getting some of the dust off of this concrete where I need to bond, give it a good surface. Okay. And I'm using Thinset. This is unmodified Thinset. And uh, you can use Curdy Fix to do this, but it's it's I actually like using Thinset because I can float it a little bit. And for stuff like this, of course, it would be really hard to do with. So I actually like to bond both um, both sides of my board. Put a layer on there. Make sure you get really good good adhesion on there. And the first first thing I do, I just kind of get them loose. I'm not even tamping it down or squishing it into place. Just setting it up. These are basically just supports that are going to be in the back. These are not going to go anywhere. For all you out there that are wondering if I've been to the Schluter Workshop shops, yes I have. October 2015, Reno, Nevada. I get a lot of comments on well, you need to go to the, the workshops. Yeah, they have been. Okay, so I can, I can start getting these put together. Start getting the miter set. a hawk and a trowel works really good when you're working with this stuff. Imagine that. Me confused.
really good there. Check across the top. Level there. Hold on. There it is. Hold on. Yeah, I get the angle. Okay. Right there. And then going this way, I got a little slope going towards the shower. So there we go. How long do you think this took, Ron, from when we started cutting? 30 yeah, minutes. 30 minutes? Yeah. So 30 minutes to build a bench. It's mostly waterproof, so all we got to do is put band on it. If we framed this, we would have had to put a drywall or a curdy, half inch curdy board, but then you have the washers that you'd have to waterproof. So this is a really cool way to make a bench. I dig it. You know, we got a nice clean miter. You, you cut it on the table saw and you get nice 90 degrees on it. So cool little bench. Mm -hmm. All right. You're good there.